I'm Kevin Rundle, and we are here for the technical reporting class, and we are going to be talking about honeypots. But before we begin, I would like you to verify that we have three human beings in the room with me, and our wonderful camera person will scan the room. You see two of them there. The third person is actually holding the camera. Excuse the vertigo for a moment. <laughs> and so we are here to talk about honeypots. And it is a great uh, security tool, and it's also very ethical in its uh, usage uh, for a lot of different reasons. And so we're going to look at some things today. First of all, a brief introduction of what a honeypot is. A honeypot is a machine that is placed on a network that is basically not secure. Uh, there's vulnerabilities in it, there's fake data in it, there are passwords in it. And uh, basically what will happen then is when somebody accesses it, uh, a trigger is uh, sent to the person who is monitoring the honeypot and then they know that it was attacked. And um, what I've got for you is an example of what the honeypots look like today. Um, this is put together by a nonprofit group called Norris. And what we've got are about 2 million honeypots around the world. And this is tracking in real time uh, the attacks. And so as you can see, uh, there are a lot of cyber attacks that take place every day. And this is just a little uh, demonstration of that. So into the world of honeypots we go. There are basically two types of honeypots. There is the low interaction and the high interaction. And as you can see, the low interaction, uh, basically it acts like an operating system. It's very easy to install. In fact, uh, a lot of open source places uh, give them away for free if you would like one. Uh, there's very minimal risk involved with this. Uh, it's basically just sitting out there doing nothing, uh, waiting for something to happen to it. And it just captures basic information. Basically, it says, oh, somebody came over to your honeypot, and you might want to take a look at it. And that's basically all the low interaction is. The high interaction, this is where you start getting into the operating systems that are the ones that we use every day. Uh, it has services. It has programs. It has emails. It looks just like a real uh, computer. Uh, it's very complex and deploy, uh, to install and to deploy because if you put it in the wrong spot, you could increase the vulnerability of your network as a whole or nobody will see it. Uh, so it's very difficult and it's also very complex. Like we said, it's an actual computer and there's a lot of uh, things to make sure you're uh, checking when you use it. Uh, there is an increased risk with this, but there is also a lot more information collected on this. You can get the IP addresses. You can get the uh, name of the person in some cases. There actually were cases where the, where the hacker's name was actually included in his attack, which was kind of a thing of look at me kind of thing. And you can also get the type of attack, how it was attacked, and this will actually help people learn how to harden their own computer systems. So if they find this path, they can block that path and prevent somebody else from doing it in the real world. So what it comes down to is weighing the risk. The greater the risk, the greater the reward is uh, a good way to think of it as a teeter-totter. So for an example, uh, the low interaction is basically, like I said, just a simple machine sitting there on the net, not really doing anything at all. A high interaction is a little bit more labor intensive, like we had said. This is an example of one of those high uh, interaction ones. This is actually called a honey net. This is one of the newer approaches to using a honey uh, pot. So what they've done is we got the internet coming into a router and then the router directs it to what is called the honey wall gateway. And what it does is basically it says, oh, you are unusual traffic. We're not sure what you are. We're going to send you through this gateway and send you into the honeypots. But before you go, we're going to capture the IP address. We're going to capture who you are. We're going to capture how did you find us. We're going to get all that information before we let you go in here and play in the honeypots. So 
this is one of the greater, uh, newer approaches. There are some other versions, like there's a wireless version out there that people can use for their wireless systems to find out how people are getting into their networks through wireless, for example. So as we said, information they gather, how the attacker entered the system and from where. Uh, for example, the, uh, Honey, no, the Norris website that we saw, that actually, if you had looked at the full screen, you would see the IP addresses of where it was going to and where it was from. Uh, what is being deleted or added? So for example, maybe somebody elevated their privileges to become an administrator so they can get into the system and do what they wish. Uh, or they deleted stuff so that they can bypass like firewalls. Uh, keystrokes of the person typing so they can actually get like the actual code, for example, of the program that they use to download into their system. Uh, what malware is being used, like maybe a tool, a rootkit was added or a Trojan was added to the system. And of course, the IP addresses like we had talked about before. Ethical concerns. This is where that gray area of the use of honeypots comes in because they look at three basic ones, entrapment, privacy, and liability. And with entrapment, it basically means uh, you're sitting there and they say, oh, I didn't realize it was, a, it was a site that I wasn't supposed to go to. You trapped me uh, by not labeling it. Privacy, the information that you gathered from the honeypot being attacked. Uh, in some cases, that person didn't give you permission to collect that information, so they say it's an invasion of privacy. And then the liability is a honeypot can actually be broken and then be used to attack other systems. Uh, there were cases, there was actually just a court case uh, in the last year where a court uh, found the person, the owner of a honeypot uh, liable for it distributing child porn. And an attacker cracked the honeypot and distributed honey, uh, child porn through the honeypot. So some best practices to think about with this is you should be using this with other security devices. Firewalls, for example, is a great one. Banners at the login screen saying you are going into an unauthorized site. You need to be aware of that. Prevent all outgoing traffic from the honeypot. Don't let anything out of it. Leave the command line blank so it doesn't show any information at all, just a blank cursor. And of course, then limit your exposure of the honeypot to the rest of the network because that's going to prevent everything else from getting in there. So uh, think about the risks. Proper setup is key. Simple steps to reduce uh, the legal issues and follow your best practices. Thank you very much.